and sick of men that have this really disgusting outlook on women policing women's bodies. Listen, if I want to sleep with this many people, I can and I will. Yeah, but what you're not getting is there's this whole hyper toxic independent movement of women, right? We are doing things because it's kind of, now it's our choice, but it's kind of like by force in the sense of, it's like we're so liberated yeah. because we're literally exhausted with men on their power trip, on their this. So it's like, oh, if you can do it, we can do it. But this is also be you, you men that think the way you think have created that. I understand your point. However, you're wrong. Uh, she thinks I'm arrogant. I'm being arrogant on purpose. I must admit, annoying her is, is kind of fun. Yeah, I think that's a pretty shitty way to interact with someone. And I don't know how you can cultivate a long, healthy relationship by approaching it through an antagonistic lens. I think that's just a recipe for self-destruction and the destruction of your significant other. Nobody likes to play my games. I guess people like Andrew Tate do, and he's admitting that here but uh, nobody likes to be on the receiving end of mind games i'll put it like that and if we're using the golden rule treat others how you would want to be treated it sounds like he's violating that right now she thinks i'm arrogant i'm being arrogant on purpose i must admit annoying her is is kind of fun yeah it's fun when you're in your teens and you don't know how to properly interact with a woman <laughs> You know, when you have bad social skills and everybody's awkward, I guess it can be fun at that stage. But when you're a grown ass man and, you know, you're in your mid 30s and you're still going around antagonizing women and trying to fuck with their heads like that's not that's not the move. To me, that's a big sign of immaturity. I think that, uh, you know what? I'm being so nice. I'm being so nice to you. I say I think instead of I know. This is him being nice. The answer is I know. I know. I don't think that's being nice. <laughs> Admitting that you don't know something and instead surmising what the answer could be is not a sign of you being nice. It's a sign that you might have humility, but it seems like Andrew is so deep down the rabbit hole of you know, red pill philosophy. He's going out of his way to cut himself off at the knees and stomp out the little bit of humility he might have left. It's unfortunate because sometimes I'll see sparks of introspection in what he's saying. And when I think he's going to follow through, he ends up going back into the rabbit hole or back into the negative thought loop, which is probably emblematic of, you know, his relationships and the way his life has turned out. Because it seems like a lot of what he talks about, a lot of what he preaches is just negativity. Women. No, I, I agree. This is what I'm saying to you. Like, there's things that you're saying, like, I don't disagree with certain things you're saying, but going back to my point, it's like by force, like, I, it's to prove a point. It's like this power struggle. Like, I personally don't want to sit and sleep with loads of men. I don't care. Like, Good. I don't We're getting somewhere. You see, God... Jesus, I'm getting her. Please, little by little, got two hours left. Give me some time, I'll fix it. No, but if I want to, then I'm going to. Sorry, but that's where, that's where you need that. to little understand. By little, little by little. No, but genuinely, but that's what you need to no, understand. No, you will not. But God will frown upon you. You can't do and that. You. And you. Leave me to end me. Yeah, I don't know if that's the new sign of an alpha male is to just like get hyper emotional and start yelling. Back in the day, that was the exact opposite of what we expected to see from a man. But it seems like nowadays, in the era of social media influencers, that's a new representation of manhood. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but... It doesn't say in the Bible I can't do that. Read the book. I can do whatever I want. I'm a man. Women can't do those things. It's disgusting. Do I can't you, believe you're poisoning the youth on YouTube. Why is he shouting? The idea that a woman can sleep with as many people as she wants just because she wants to is wrong. It's absolutely wrong. Every man knows it and every woman knows it. Women should not do that. And the whole idea and the whole concept that females can adopt the promiscuity of males. Yeah, there's so many false things he's saying, like one after the other. It's really hard to keep track and respond to each and every single point he's making. So I won't do that, but just know that almost everything he's saying, I can rebut. And I would, but it wouldn't be an efficient use of my time. Just so you know. Do you think so? Absolutely. Absolutely. I know very good men would you would you deem them high value men oh absolutely successful everything that i listed earlier 100 percent. and they don't cheat right yeah it's possible <laughs> i don't know why he's laughing this no seriously this guy is so toxic 
and the only kind of people that listen to his kind of his advice are broke men or heartbroken men that are insecure i think that i mean a lot of people are going to take offense to what she's saying but it's absolutely right tell me when was the last time that andrew tate's advice helped you get pussy i wait and be honest too don't just go in the comments and say oh yeah since i listened to andrew tate I've been getting pussy left and right. No, you know the fuck you haven't because this shit does not work in real life. He is playing a character and if you're buying into it, you're going to go down a dark path that leads to emptiness and lack of fulfillment. So you can follow this motherfucker if you want, but I'm letting you know right now, shit, it, it's not a good move. If a man has options over a long enough time frame, he's going to eventually probably explore one of them options. Now, I'm not saying he's going to love another woman. I'm saying that a man who, when a man's in love, he only loves one girl. I agree with that. I believe in love. I believe a man can. I don't even know if that's. Man. I don't even know if that's true. I think it's possible for a man to love more than one woman. It's just a matter of being able to control his impulses and desires and prioritize what means the most to him. Um, and if he can't do that, then he's not a man. So in many ways, Andrew Tate is preaching to young men around the world to just do whatever you want without any self-control. And that's not the definition of a man and what a man should be. Men have responsibilities. Men have obligations. Men have a duty to take care of themselves and the people around them. What he's preaching right now is not self-sufficiency. It's not being able to do right by the people around you. It's snake shit. He's advocating for you to be a fucking deceptive, manipulative, slimy motherfucker. And it's, it's sad. And should take care of a woman. I believe you should come home to the same place every day. I believe all those things. However, I think if a man truly has options, truly, that both the man and the woman understand that at some point he's gonna explore those options. No, listen, if, if I'm with you, do you think I'm gonna allow you to explore other options? It's either you're with me or you're not, go go be single then. Cool. Like what, but realistically, what, what self-respecting woman is gonna sit there and tolerate you I don't cheat. Out. I don't cheat. I'm a good man. Saying, I don't cheat. Woman. Yeah, you don't cheat because you have 30 girlfriends that you pay for. But um, on the note of monogamy, Honestly, I don't even subscribe to the notion that men and women should be tied down to one another and forced into monogamous relationships. I think there is some room for gray area if both parties agree to it. And when I say gray area, I'm in favor of what they call open relationships so long as both people are able to control their jealousy, envy, and territorial dispositions. Me personally, I don't necessarily find fulfillment in having multiple relationship partners. In fact, talking to multiple women at the same time makes me a little anxious because I only have so much energy to give. I only have so much time to distribute and I don't trust that I can distribute it equally. So I probably wouldn't be in an open relationship for those reasons if you have all these other options because no, 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 right. well, i'll tell you what's more powerful what's more alpha yeah. what's more attractive and what's more high value right. is a man that can respect his woman yeah love her not cheat on her not disregard her not see himself above. and i think the thing that like gets most people about cheating and infidelity is not necessarily or, or i guess i'll just speak for myself i think it's the distrust factor you know if we both agree to the terms and conditions of this relationship and we we established that we're only going to date one another and you violate that agreement that becomes a problem because it's it's not a matter of like you were with someone else it's a matter of i trusted you to uphold this agreement and you violated my trust so that is what rubs me wrong about the concept of cheating which is why i think society is living in the stone ages as far as monogamy is concerned i really do um if you look at a lot of indigenous societies um people would come and go out of relationships without any hard feelings and it wouldn't be uncommon for women to have more than one male partner or for indigenous men to have more than one female partner. I think when you try to like claim somebody as property, which is often what a lot of monogamous relationships are reduced to, 
you start facing those issues. Maybe it's time for society to evolve and entertain the idea of open relationships. See him as, you know, she's his slave or anything like that. See her as an equal, treat her with respect, and put her on that, that's more powerful, a partnership, two people. Not, oh, I'm a man, I have options, I'm gonna explore them. Listen, if you're a cheater, you're a cheater. If you're a loyal person, you're a loyal person. That's it. I don't know if it's that simple. I think people are super complicated and someone can cheat for a multitude of reasons. Granted, I don't like people who cheat, but I don't believe that like once a cheater, always a cheater. Just like I don't believe that just because you haven't cheated yet doesn't mean you won't cheat in the future. People are more complicated than that. Men and women are not equal. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, I will say that some people are just like perpetual cheaters. That's true, and I've met those people before. Secondly, is that if a woman sees a, if sees Chris Brown in the club, do you think she's like, wow, he'll be loyal? Fuck no, she doesn't care. Like, at high enough status as a man, women don't even care about loyalty. Women don't even care about loyalty at high enough status. And I'm not, and I don't cheat. I don't think Listen, I'm a man of God. I go to church. I don't cheat. I'm I don't know about. what like empirical measurements or studies he comes up with to support his points, but it sounds like he hasn't cited any of them, right? So he's just making continuous assertions based on his experiential knowledge, meaning knowledge that comes from his personal interactions throughout the course of his life. Okay, but I'm, what I'm trying to explain to you though, because maybe your perception of what a high value woman is, is what? Because I'm a high value woman, I make my own money, I possess all the qualities that I listed earlier, right? I believe I'm not gonna be with a man that's gonna cheat. I'm not gonna look at a man like Chris Brown and be like, oh my God, like he's loyal. It, you, see, you see it as face value, you know he's a cheat, and maybe he'd just be a one night guy. Cool. Just like you men do it to Would you sleep with him for one night? I don't think I would. I hope not, because that would no, not make you a one no, value woman. No, this is what I'm saying, because it's like, when you hold yourself in high regard, you don't need to do those things. So the kind of... Men can have one-nighters with women and still retain their status as high-value men. But if women do it, they lose their status as a high-value woman. I don't think he has any foundation to support that claim other than his own philosophy on the world which is highly subjective that's my issue with him he's just giving his opinions and framing them as if they are undeniable truths about the world like they're not in fact i would say my experience dealing with women is almost the exact opposite of his now does that mean my opinions are any more correct than his no but the difference between he and i is that i could like embrace the complicated nature of relationships all right so, so we agree so on saying, something but i'm saying so when you generalize about women don't do that because there are many high value women who would refuse him that will not tolerate that completely I'm not saying that. My point is you completely misunderstand me. I'm saying a certain- I wonder what separates Andrew Tate from Chris Brown. I find it interesting that he's made that comparison when he's been accused of abuse. As far as their philosophies and how they treat women, it just makes you wonder what's the difference between Andrew Tate and Chris Brown. Females aren't even interested in loyalty. Do you think people, do you think all the girls with Dan Bilzerian think is loyal? I'm not saying every girl will go with him. I'm saying there are certain girls at a certain level of male achievement. Do you think those girls that are with Dan Bilzerian are actually in relationships with him? It's important to draw the distinction between fucking with a girl and being in a relationship with her. If you're just fucking with her, then chances are she knows what it is and you know what it is. And there is no mutual loyalty. There's just a mutual understanding that uh, we're both with each other for the moment but this is by no means permanent or long term so i find it interesting that he keeps going back and forth without like drawing that clear distinction between are we in a relationship or are we not in a relationship because that context matters not interested in but is that attractive like for me personally that's not attractive to sit there Good. and see a man that thinks it's cool to have loads of women around him be it. like oh my god they're bitches this is that i have all this money that doesn't impress me that doesn't impress a lot of women I it's agree. about raising a family it's about unity and stuff. I agree. But everything that you were saying that i also think she's falling into the rabbit hole of making over generalizations about what women want and what women need um she can't speak for all women just like andrew tate can't speak for all men 
We can just speak based on our own experiences in the world with relationships and romantic encounters. And that's what's getting lost in this video. All men are never this and all women are never just that. So I think there's a lot of like reductionism that makes this conversation nonsensical. I have enough value when they have options, they will explore them. That's what I'm saying. And I'm also saying that if a man did decide to explore his options, it would not be as disgusting as if a female decided to explore okay, options. Okay, wouldn't it just be disgusting then? No, it's different if a woman does it. It's different if a woman does it. Everyone watching this knows. Why are you trying to over talk her and like shout at her because she's disagreeing with you, bro? Like. Like, that shit is so unnecessary. It's different if a woman cheats. It's different. Honestly, men with these sexist views, like, it's so outdated. It's not just sexist, it's an unfair double standard that he's applying. What kind of relationship do you have with your mother? A good one. A good one? Yeah, I take care of her. And, and, and also that paradigm, the whole idea that if you find a man who's good with his mom, then he's good with girls, that's, that's, that's bullshit. No, no, it was just more because I find that your thoughts... I think she hit a nerve. That question put him on the defensive. He's good with girls, that's, that's the and, and And also that paradigm, the whole idea that if you find a man who's good with his mom, then he's good with girls, that's, that's, that's bullshit. No, no, it was just more because I find that... He just tried to anticipate where she was going to take the conversation. That's why he said, well, that whole saying that if you're good with your mother, you're good with women, that's bullshit. That's him trying to anticipate where she's going to take the conversation next. That's interesting. Towards women are quite disrespectful. You think so? Mm. Why? this arrogance that you've got. Don't tell me what, I, I'd actually like to know what I've said so far. No, I'm just it. saying, it's, it's not, you don't have to say anything. It's like energy speaks volumes because mm. you're not actually listening to what I'm saying. I'm listening to everything you're saying. I don't think you're listening to what I'm saying. I'm saying women shouldn't sleep with lots of men and they should fall in love with one man and stay with that man. And if that man takes care of them and ends up across 20 years sleeping with one chick once, you shouldn't leave him. That's all I'm saying. See, that sounds reasonable what he just said, but it's where he takes these like simple truths and how he stretches them to consider Consolidate total control over women is what I have a problem with. Um, yeah, it's it's a weird thing how he makes himself seem like reasonable. He's like, well, this is all I believe. I just think that men and women should be faithful to each other. And if a, a guy just so happens to slip up, then, you know, a woman shouldn't just leave him. That's all I'm saying. And the point I'm making is completely valid. And if a that's woman sleeps with one man once, that's unacceptable. What, the See, man there he goes. They, that's when he takes it to the extreme. And the point I'm making is this completely valid. And if a woman sleeps he is sneaky, man. He is sneaky. Leave him. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And the point I'm making is completely valid. And if a woman sleeps with one man once, that's unacceptable. What if a man does it, it's, it's acceptable. Do you see how he just snuck that in there, though? Do you, do you just want women to be submissive to you? I think in a healthy relationship, there's always a leader, whether it's the man or the woman. And I think that it should be in the, the happiest relationships, the man's in charge. I don't think women should be submissive to an idiot. Yeah. And I don't think women should be submissive to any man they meet. And I don't think women should be submissive when they're not rewarded. Right. If, if a captain is in charge of a ship, he's responsible for the ship, right? Mm -hmm. If he's responsible for the ship, he has authority over the ship. Okay, you, it's a, I'm a woman, I'm not a ship. Yeah, we're a relationship. Sorry. Okay, the ship is a relationship. I know exactly what this guy's doing. It's just like talking in riddles. Like none of it actually yeah. makes sense if you actually listen to what he's saying. So I think if a man has responsibility and he takes care of the woman, and improves her life and makes sure that every single facet of her life, whether spiritual, physical, financial, etc., is taken care of, then he should have some degree of authority. I don't see why a man would take care of a woman and have no authority. But some degree of authority is not the same as having complete control and domination over the woman, which is what you're advocating for. You're advocating for men to have complete control over the woman, complete dominance in every aspect of her life, where she can go, what she can do, who she can talk to who she can't talk to. That's different than saying some authority. Like, bro, you're contradicting yourself here and you're doing it in ways that sound very manipulative and conniving. And that's something I just can't respect. You know what I'm saying? If you're a straight up misogynist and you just inherently believe that men should be in control of every facet of a woman's life, I still can't respect that philosophy because that shit is unfair and I don't like unfair transactions, but I respect that more than I respect you trying to like dress up your misogyny in a way that makes it sound like it's actually beneficial for the woman and liberating for her and like deferential to her. And that shit is snaky to me. While accepting all of the responsibility that's getting played. You're an independent woman. Maybe you make your own money. You want to do all those own things. That's fine. Fantastic. 
But if, if I had a woman, I would say, look, I like that you do your own things. I like that you do your jobs, but let's keep it part time. I want you to come with me. We got to go here. We got to go there. I'm taking you around the world. You're with me. I'm taking care of you, etc. Wow. And I'd expect her to listen to me in return. Why wouldn't she? I'm not going to tell you to do anything wrong or bad. But if I were to say, bro, you're telling her to limit her scope. You're telling her to suppress her dreams and aspirations, to take everything that she's built from the ground up and put a cap on it. And you're saying that's not bad. That might not be bad for you because you're insecure and you feel like in order to be in a relationship with a woman, you need complete control over her. But for her, that is bad because she's her own person. She has autonomy. She has agency. And if you just come out of the blue trying to take that away from her, it just goes to show, bro, that you don't want a woman who is mentally strong and self-sufficient. You want a woman that's needy and clingy and relies on you in every facet of life. Bro, just go and have kids. If that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for a human being to be dependent on you, go adopt some kids, bro. And I wouldn't even recommend that this dude adopt kids. I don't trust him with, you know, around kids. I don't trust him around anybody who's dependent on him, you know, to take care of themselves because he seems like a borderline a abusive individual. I don't like that dude. Stop talking to him. I'm her man, not that dude. It shouldn't even be a competition. It should be all right, cool, block. Mm. If you're with a woman who you have to tell her to block somebody on social media, she ain't yours to begin with. And that just goes to show that this man is not used to engaging with like normal women. He's used to attracting certain types of women, certain types of women that play to, probably play the same mind games that he plays certain types of women that probably have similar attachment issues that he has if not opposite ends of the spectrum whereas he is he seems to be like emotionally detached and avoidant but it sounds like what he's looking for is a woman that is emotionally codependent and clingy and some men like that shit. Some men like their women to be clingy because it makes them feel like they're in control. Personally, I don't need a woman to make me feel like a man. I don't need a woman um, being clingy as fuck, always texting my phone, always wanna be in my vicinity in order to make me feel like a man. In fact, that sounds off alarms in my head because I'm like, girl, you should be out there grinding just like me. We supposed to be building together because this is a collaboration. This relationship is me and you dealing with the ups and downs of life, looking out for each other, supporting each other. This is what I'm saying. It's just a double standard and it's just like a power struggle. Like it's about balance. Life you know, and this is the thing, like I feel a lot of women could give you that life and be like, you know what, he can have a girlfriend, he can, there's so many people that are into that. I'm not even saying, no, I'm not no, sure. No, but I'm saying there's people that are into that. Correct. But, I'm oh. but he wants every woman to be into that. That's his problem. Actually, I'm listening to everything you're saying, I'm agreeing and I'm liking it. But then, if you've got me out here looking stupid because you might be in clubs with all these women around you, making me look like a f idiot, do you think I'm going to tolerate that? No. When you have men like you have explained it's as if you're trying to prove a point to the world that you're yeah. this great man that has all these options no, and you're so successful i agree like, it doesn't work like i agree that. with you if if there was a man which is not me because i'm a one woman man but if there was a man who decided to have multiple girlfriends his approach certainly wouldn't be sitting down and saying it the way i'm saying it the point i'm trying to make is i think that the idea of a man having a girlfriend who he loves and maybe sometimes stepping out is not nearly as offensive as the idea of a woman having a man she loves and sometimes stepping out. He's right about that, but my point is that either we take offense to it on both ends or we don't take offense to it at all, but it has to be fair. I watched American Pie the other week and I thought that would have been the best time to be alive. You know, like 2003. Like you can still call the people you care about if it's a real emergency, but no one's glued to their phone. Yeah. No one's scrolling social media. No one's trying to take an Instagram picture. Everyone's just at the crappy party, enjoying the crappy party. Like if you go to Dubai and you look around the bar, half the people aren't having fun. They're just purely yeah. trying to get Insta stories to look like they're having fun. So it's pure like, ha ah, ha 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 Okay, so I think that a lot of people now are doing things. Not yeah, but I'll be honest, bro. You seem like the type of dude to do that. I mean, I don't know what his Instagram looks like, but. See, so he is the type of dude to like take those videos instead of just like living life he has to. 
you know, take pictures of what he's doing and show people that he's a shit with a cigar in his mouth on a fucking island. Yeah, bro, I can't. It's hard for me to take him seriously. It's hard for me to take him seriously because he pl- he applies an entirely different standard of life to other people than he does to himself. Every other picture is just like, and he doesn't look happy in any of these pictures. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro ain't smiling. He's not with a special woman. He's not like hanging out with friends and shit like that. Like, I don't know, man. He doesn't look like a very happy individual. And if you're going to him like in search of wisdom that could lead you to a happy and fulfilling life, I think you, (laughs) my advice is not to get misled. Not because they enjoy them, because other people will think they're having fun and it's more about creating envy as opposed to actually enjoying yourself. Right. If you go on a really fun night out, you don't take your phone out. So when I see someone who went on a night out and took 20 stories dancing and laughing. Then what does that say about you, bro? Because everywhere you go, it looks like you be taking your phone out, taking pictures of everything instead of just living in the moment. And having a great time. I know they're bored. Yeah, they're not in the moment. Do you know what I mean? Because if you really have a great night out, you don't take any stories and you, you forget to check. Glasses are off. So I'm actually that. connecting with a real human. I'm a real human. You look really nice. Yeah, and you smell nice. Thank you. I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> Dressed up for you, of course. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to see someone. See, and this is what women like. Guys, take note. If you want a woman's approval, like, this is the type of shit that gets it. Like, just being authentic and being real. Granted, you're going to get some fake-ass women that don't like you being authentic and you being real and you taking off your sunglasses when you're in the building. Because some women do gravitate towards toxic guys, but those are not the women that you want to fuck with. But if you present yourself as a toxic man, those are the women that you're going to attract. See what I'm saying? Make the effort, you know? Where I'm from, in Eastern Europe, I I always wear a suit because we we can carry weapons over there. Here in London, it's a little bit different. We have to take security with us. But where I'm from, you have the jacket because you have the strap. It's different, different game. What the fuck does that have to do with it? He gets so close. This is what I'm talking about as far as like self-sabotaging behavior. You could tell that like there are some parts of him that are real and that are authentic but because he's trying to play this character he goes out of his way to suppress them um, because he thinks that's what women want and it's really sad to watch because it just indicates to me that the reason why he'll never be in a healthy relationship is not necessarily because he is incapable of self-reflecting and surrendering some control, he's capable of doing that. He just won't. He just refuses to. And when we talk about like relationships, especially deep and long-term relationships that are fulfilling, where both parties feel like they're getting something meaningful out of it, it's going to require you to let your guard down. It's going to require you to be vulnerable. You know what I'm saying? But you could tell like when he feels like he's being too vulnerable, he automatically goes back to the character. It's like, bro, just be yourself, man. Be yourself. Because if you weren't like this fucking macho, like the shit he just said about the weapon, she didn't give a fuck about that. Like she was like, all right. But now he's like being himself. And she's like feeling it. Like, guys, that's what you need to do. Just be yourself, bro. Yeah. Enemies are watching. Listen, I'm ready. Let's leave it at that. But I'm very security conscious now. And I think that there's a difference between fighting and violence. And even though I'm a professional fighter, if you want to be a professional of violence, you need a weapon at some professional level. Okay. That's my answer. Interesting. Just imagine in these scenarios, we are together. Okay. okay. What would you do if I wanted to start an OnlyFans? I don't think there's anything intrinsically wrong with women doing OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. As long as I had influence and control over it. What do you mean? Do you yeah. have to be the photographer and get the angles, yeah? No, 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 no. Not doing any real work, but just like taking all the money. If my chick said I want to do only things, so back on his cool, bullshit. Go do it. How much you made? Ten grand? All right, give me eight. All right, cool. All right. Bro, you might as well be a pimp if that's what the agreement is going to be. You can do an OnlyFans, but 
I keep all the money. What woman is gonna give you eight grand? Because she's it's my you're my woman, you're doing OnlyFans, you're selling my product. What the fuck? Your product. Yes, the correct. Woman is not, she's so not the sport. woman is a product, basically. No. Product? Like, do you own me? No, no, sorry. Like your ego is a bit too big. You don't own me. I'm not a product. I'm not an object. No. Okay, Mr. Tate? I'm just answering it. You actually, I don't know if you're being serious. I'm totally serious. How would I let my chick do OnlyFans and keep all the money? That's disrespectful. What woman is ever going to give you that? Then she better not do OnlyFans. Duh. Oh my God. That upset her, didn't it? It upset her to say that you're mine and if you're mine... And I don't think it upset her. I think he's getting like confused between disappointing people and upsetting them. Like he thinks he's upsetting her, but in all reality, I see disappointment written all over her face. Like, damn. This is really what this motherfucker believes? Like disappointment and also confusion. That's not the same as like pissing somebody off or like trolling them. There are certain things that he says that makes her like him and then he ruins it by saying some stupid shit like that. Basically, you're my product and if you're gonna do OnlyFans, I need to own all of your revenue. That shit sounds kind of pathetic. Good women don't like men who are gross and insecure and hold shit over their head and make them feel like they're indebted to you. Good women don't like that shit. They're turned off by that. Men want to pay for it, then the money is mine. But that's the basic dynamic of a relationship. You're mine. So if you want to sell what is mine, that's fine. But I need to get paid. What would you do if I couldn't cook? That's fine. We eat out every day. No problem. I, I, I haven't had a home cooked meal in years anyway. No way. No, I eat out nearly every See, day. See, motherfucker, maybe that's what you need. Maybe you need a good woman who would cook a meal for you. Maybe you wouldn't be so wound up and tense if you had a woman like that. This goes to show that he might not be attracting the right woman. Oh my God. Always traveling, always. See, home. did you see her response? Oh my God, she kind of felt bad for him. And I'm sure that like, if he wasn't such a fucking weirdo, she would be more than happy to date him and cook a homemade meal for him. Cause a lot of good women out there want a man that they can cook for, but they have to feel safe and secure with him. They, they have to know that he's not gonna take advantage of them or manipulate them or deceive them or make them feel like they owe him. And even when I'm home, is saying restaurants, so. Do you ever want to just settle down? I feel like your life just seems like it's just really fast paced. Do you not want just a nice woman? If she cooks for me, that'd be beautiful, but it's not, it's not a deal breaker. Okay, I like that. What if I earned more money than you? Impossible. Mm, never mind. No, 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 impossible. Literally, really? Literally impossible. <laughs> is it impossible? Literally impossible. Numbers don't go that high. Next question. <laughs> it's impossible for her to earn more money than me simply because of her ethos towards life. Her ethos towards life is about moments and memories. My ethos towards life is about conquest. And those are very, very different things. I completely understand that she enjoys things which are not congruent with trying to conquer Earth. She wants time off. She wants holidays. She wants to enjoy time with friends. She Listen to how he talks about like the meaning of life is to just conquer. The That's not how money. Mean. I want to make money. It's impossible she could ever earn more than me because we have completely different life philosophies. What would you do if I didn't like your lifestyle? What, what aspect of my lifestyle? Maybe it was too flashy for me, flying around too much. Maybe I just want you to just slow down. It's a bit too fast place. I understand. Yeah. And, I, and I would respect the point of view. So what are you doing? I don't think I'd listen. My lifestyle got me to where I am and I, I'm a sovereign individual who lives in the way he believes true. I would listen and I would understand it and I would do my best to accommodate, but I don't think I would change. If you were to say, look, then, you can't. bro, that's not doing your. If you're gonna do your best to accommodate, but the outcome is that you're not gonna accommodate, then what fucking difference does it make? He just doesn't have the. He doesn't have the mental fortitude or moral compass to create and sustain a healthy and long-lasting relationship with a woman, and he doesn't have what it takes to like attract a high-quality woman and make her happy. So at the end of the day, if his manhood is rooted in seeking the approval of a high quality female, he's failed on multiple levels based on what he's saying, not based on what I believe or what I think, based on the metrics he uses. If I do this anymore, I'd say, oh, I'm gonna do it anyway, sorry. You know, I'll try and make you feel better about it, but it's gonna happen. What if your family didn't like me? That's no big deal. Not a big deal? Nah. The only, the only person I'm super close with is my brother. Okay. And my brother wouldn't dislike you unless he had a reason, like a genuine reason. And if he disliked you, I'd dislike you, so then the game over anyway. Not because he dislikes you, but because we have the same standards of life. 
There's no way he could dislike you without me disliking you. Says literally that two of you that have these mad views. M my views are not mad. What have I said so Who's far? What? what have I said so far? Women shouldn't be hoes. There we go. Man. He's over talking her again and like shouting at her. Bro, this is not... If this is your king, if this is who you aspire to be in life, you need to reevaluate what you look for in a male role model. Because all I hear is somebody who's scared, insecure, and fearful about what would happen if he open himself up to be loved or to love someone else. Man should have some authority because he should take care of his chick. Chick shouldn't talk to shouting? a bunch of dudes. Why are you shouting? It's important for the mic. No, it's not because Joe, Joe And that's it. That's all I've said. And you're and you're saying I got crazy views. He's the type of guy I could tell he's used to being around women who are easily intimidated and shaken up by him. But she seems to be like strong willed, even though I disagree with her on a lot of the points that she's made, her will seems to be very strong and kind of unshakable. You said like the loudest person in the room is the weakest. Oh, my weak now. No, but I'm just saying, don't people say that. Let's have an like, arm wrestle. This is, I'm not doing an arm wrestle. Come on, no, I want to see it. That. Come on. No. You look strong. Look, I'm a nice feminine lady who doesn't like wrestles. to do these activities, okay? Yeah. What would you do if I wanted to invite other people into our sex life? Well, obviously, I'm going to ask if it's boys or girls. But even then, even if it was girls, it would be weird. I think it'd be a bit strange. If I had a girlfriend, she said, I really want you to f this chick, I'd be like, mm, this is not the normal feminine mindset. You must not like me. And it'd just seem odd to me. Something would be up. I'm, re I'm really surprised by that answer. I don't know why. I feel like you'd be the type of person that would want loads of threesomes and stuff and feel like, yes, this lifestyle, I'm the man. Sex in and of itself is boring. Any man who sits and says that sex is great or sex is fun just clearly hasn't had enough sex because sex is boring. Sex is a chore. Sex is like food. You don't really care unless you're really hungry, and then you eat and then you don't care again. And it's one of the, yeah, it's one of those things you you got you do every once in a while because it's an urge, but it's not a real big deal. Like every. Nah, I think it depends on who you have it with and how deep the connection is. Person needs food, and every person likes food. Have you ever been in love? Completely, but. He's talking about having sex and making love. Yeah. Different. No, no, no. You could tell that sex for him is something that he uses to fill a void. In the same way that, as he says, one would eat food when they're hungry. He doesn't see it as something that is meaningful, sacred, that you can use as a bridge to build a deeper emotional connection with someone or even a spiritual connection with them. He just sees it as something to like devour. No, no, no. Okay, that's no. what it is really. Then. No, that's a separate argument. That's a completely separate argument that we can go into if you want. Every single man wants to fuck his female friend because if, a, if all these girls go, he's just my friend. Yeah, put on 20 stones, see if he wants to talk to you. Fuck no. Oh yeah, protect his spirit when you're fat. Oh, you can't do it anymore. You lost your spiritual powers, now you're ugly. You're I don't agree with him that every man wants to fuck their female friend. I've had female friends, but then again, I wasn't sexually attracted to them, so. Well, how'd that work out? It's bullshit, man. The man's trying to get laid, and the chick's enjoying attention. And I'm telling you that as a man, you obtain nothing from a female friendship. You obtain nothing but responsibility without authority. You're going to sit there and say, I'm her friend. I'm going to take care of her. I'm going to hang out with her. I'm going to take her to the cinema and buy her a ticket, and she's going to go home and f some other dude. Stupid. I'm not saying I won't be polite to be, hi, nice to meet you. Good to see you. Bye. I'm never going to be like, hey, let's go for dinner. No. We're just friends. Again, so I... Here's another disagreement I have with him. Whereas I've met women that were like funny as fuck and like one characteristic that I value in people, regardless of their gender, is like having a sense of humor. And if someone is witty enough to just make up a joke on the spot and make me laugh, that's something that pulls me towards them. So as far as I know, she never really caught feelings with me. Now that friendship did not sustain, it did not persist. Um, but it was good for as long as it lasted and it didn't end because, you know, there were any romantic feelings involved, um, but because we just grew apart over time. I think that's proof that men and women can be friends and that both can get something out of the equation. Why? But friend dates is a thing. This is not uh, no, no, this is a, my no, brain. But, no, but this is what I'm saying to you because it, it needs to be normalized because if you don't have any female friends, you're just basing all your philosophies on just women mm. that you don't even talk to. Men who pretend to be friends with girls are just trying to get laid because there's nothing else to do okay. with a friendship with a girl but trying trying to get laid. It's just that's something not always true. Shit, trying to pretend to get laid. Okay. If they, well, they were G, if they were G, they'd just try. She'd say no and then move on with their life. No, they wouldn't. Yes, they would. Okay, I've got a long list of good male friends. So we're just agree to disagree on this. Put on, okay. ten, put on 10 stone and text them. Good luck. Andrew, what's the um, war room? 
The War Room is an organization I run okay. for individuals who are trying to escape the Matrix. Like, so can women join it? So women love the Matrix. So what's your Matrix? No, the, the Matrix. Explain it. I don't understand. Have you seen the movie? Yeah. So we're living inside of a simulation, right? We're all slaves on some level. And I have an organization which helps people. Yeah, and you behave a lot like a slave master. Achieve the independence from the systems which are designed to constrain us. So I can join it. No. Dude, you're designing the systems that constrain us. The shit that, the way that you present yourself makes a lot of men self-conscious and sets an unrealistic standard for what uh, manhood is supposed to represent in your world. A man who isn't shit unless he's making a million dollars, has 20 girlfriends, and carries himself like an asshole. If he doesn't do those things in your eyes, then he really isn't worth that much. That's what I've taken away from this interview. But I'll give him the floor to continue his thought. Uh, women love control. Women love control and women love systemization. I mean. think people love control, dude. What, 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 what aspects of my life do I enjoy having control? Well, the way I've been analyzing this date. Okay, analyze it, yeah, go no, on. It's just I'm interested. Go, no, I'm, go. Just saying, I'm just saying it's a very power dynamic control thing. Every time he's raised his voice in this debate, it's been in an effort to gain control. He's scared of losing it, which is why he's against women pursuing careers that are independent of him and what he can offer. I like having control of my own life. I don't like anyone having control over me. And that's what the Matrix does. Whereas fem females, I don't think, have that same mindset towards you're not advocating for men to have control over themselves that's not what you're advocating for you're not pushing for self-mastery you're pushing for men to be enslaved to what women think about them and what certain types of women value in certain types of men it's the world i don't think women wake up and realize that they live inside of a, a large penal colony and need to find a way to escape i don't think they do that yeah we do do you yeah to, what enslaves humanity there's a lot of people that are very conscious to life and situations and stuff. So I feel like it's very small-minded for you to just think that women can't join your matrix. Well, it's not small-minded because it's mine. So firstly, I'm allowed to do whatever I want. Okay. That is my reaction. Um, I've essentially told you what I think about Andrew Tate based on this interview. Tell me what you think in the comments, even if you disagree with me. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Just remember that at the end of the day, we're all human beings and we're all deserving of dignity and respect, regardless of whether you're a man or a woman whether your net worth is a million dollars or one thousand dollars whether you own a private jet or a fucking bicycle that you drive back and forth to work you know people are people please comment like and subscribe also let me know what else you want me to put out or break down and i will see y'all next time peace